Hi, I'm Steve, walking my shop. In this continuing episode of getting the most from your slider, I'm going to cover the miter operation using the, the outrigger and miter fence. Okay, when doing the miter operation, you can have forward angle and reverse angle. Now this particular saw has an option of a miter table, which gives full support of the stock uh, that, that you've got either way. Uh, other other saws would have a fence, the, a typical fence that would have a, a miter gauge on the, on the outrigger, a scale on the outrigger, and then you would angle your fence either forward or aft. Uh, I always keep my fence forward. Uh, it's just a preference for me. You may have different options, uh, different preferences. First thing I want to do is talk about the concept of length compensation. Now, your stops are going to be set up for and calibrated to where you can really get dead on with this, uh, with your stops, regardless of whether you have an analog scale or a digital scale. Okay, so I've pulled this away to, to just for visual clarity. And I've locked the table just for ease of, ease of operation. So right now I'm at 90 degrees. And what I mean by length compensation is what happens to your settings. Regardless of whether you have a cabinet saw or a slider, you have the length compensation. But unless you have a calibrated stop system, you've probably never noticed it. I ran a, a, a cabinet saw, a contractor saw for 25 years. And to be honest with you, I never gave this one iota a thought. But it's there. And... Um, I'm going to unlock this thing, and I'm going to I'm going to hold this piece up against the stop, and I'm going to miter the fence, and you'll see what's happening to the workpiece as I'm angling this, and I'm I'm just shy of 45 degrees now, and I am probably a good nine or ten inches, maybe even more, away from the blade but my stop still indicates the 688.2 millimeter setting that I had when I pulled it back. But not only that, the, it changes from er, with every angle, and that's to be expected. And this saw, it also changes when you go the other way. And I'm um, just over, let's see, I'm... Um, right at 45 degrees here. And you'll notice the, that the distance away from the, the cutting edge is significantly closer than it was in the reverse angle. So that's the concept of length compensation or why you need it. And different saws will have varying methods of length compensation from non-existent to you know, you're on your own, go figure it out yourself, which is easy enough to do. It's just convenient to have that built into the system. Some saws or outriggers, might ha you may have, have an option, which is a, a length compensating index system. And it's typically a plate here with a bunch of indents that your fence goes into. And it calibrates your stop for those different angles. And the problem with that is it only does standard miters. It doesn't do the, or doesn't have any compensation for every, every possible angle and tilt to the saw, saw blade if you're doing compound miters because the length is going to vary with the thickness of the material. Uh, the third option will, is what this machine has. It has calculational aids for, for how to... Um, uh, determine what your stop setting is to get your desired length and then you've got the very high-end machines that have just the, the stops automatically uh, go to the proper position for what your what your program is and um, obviously I don't have that I can only demonstrate what I do have which is the calculation aid. The way I normally do my miters I, I will do my my last cut such that the point the long points are, are toward the fence. And that, that's how, 
the reason I do that is because, as you notice from this length compensation, when I'm doing the reverse angle with the with a angle mitered back that way, I can get a much shorter piece than I can with a fence angle this way. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, before I get started here, I want to talk a little bit about what settings I'm going to use. This was my original sketch of the compound serving, miter serving tray. And what I'm shooting here is for, a, for a sides that have a slope of 15 degrees off the vertical. And since I got a four-sided box, I'll need to establish the, the miter setting for the, or the tip blade tilt which will cut that angle and the miter fence will establish the 15 degree angle. So there's various calculators you can use online. Uh, you can use online calculators, there's spreadsheets you can do, there's PDF files you can do, but you don't need to go through the trigonometry to go figure this out on your own because, hey, why reinvent the wheel if it's already done? So to get these parameters, um, I need, I've gone to one of those calculators and, the, and the, for a four-sided box, 15 degrees off the vertical, I need my miter fence to be set at 14.51 degrees. I need my blade tilt to be set at 43.08 degrees. Now, if you round off the nearest tenth of degree, it's probably good enough because wood's going to move anyway. So. I'm going to show you how I set this on the, uh, on the compensation, but the first thing I'm going to do is tilt the blade and adjust the miter fence to cut the, uh, uh, to miter the, the wild end. Okay, so I've got the blade tilted to 43.1 degrees. Now I need to tilt the miter fence or angle the miter fence to 14.51 degrees. So I'm going to unlock this and this has a digital indicator on it. It <laughs> indicates the nearest hundredth of a degree, which if, you, if you're just doing standard miters, that probably doesn't mean anything to you, but when you start getting into the accuracy needed for compound miters, uh, that is really helpful. Uh, one thing I'd like to say, if you do not have uh, this built into your slider, I highly recommend getting you a, a digital angle gauge. This has magnets you can put to your saw blade. Uh, zero to your sliding table, tilt it to your saw blade, and manually adjust to the proper angle. And they, they make some digital, digital protractors, which I do not have, but I've got a, a, a protractor here with a veneer scale. Its resolution is to the nearest uh, five minutes which is one twelfth of, of a degree, which is plenty accurate for what, what we're doing here. Um, both of these are plenty accurate. If you get a digital protractor, uh, some of them have resolution in there's tenth of a degree, which is what you want. If it's got any greater than that, say uh, half a degree, I wouldn't waste my money on that. I would get, I would get a, a, a tenth of a degree miter. Uh, accuracy or resolution. So this has a fine adjust on it and I'm going to set this to 14.51 degrees and I am at 14.51 degrees and I always like to clamp the workpiece here. Make sure I'm tied up against the fence stops.
Okay, I fed that a bit too fast and got some chip out on the point. So, since I'm dealing with the with the uh, with the wild end, it didn't really matter. Uh, that's why I always uh, um, cut my pieces longer than what they're actually necessary to cut. Okay, so now let's go to the do the opposite side miter. So I'm going to go to minus 14.51 degrees. So here I am, minus 14.51 degrees. If you do not have a computerized type machine, this one is not fully computerized, but it does have a length compensation aid for you. Uh, the best way to do that is to make your pieces longer, and this one is much longer than I really needed because I'm shooting for 500 millimeters long. Um, but the best way to do that is to f set your fence up, make your cut, measure what you actually get, and then adjust your stop accordingly with that difference. Uh, so if you do not have a computerized machine, it, it's not like it's the end of the world. As a matter of fact, most people probably don't have that. And um, I didn't have one for quite some time. Okay, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time I've ever shown the computer interface on the, uh, the Martin T60 Classic. Uh, just a quick, quick summary. The, this is the blade height. This is the blade tilt. This is the fence position. Uh, I've, got, I've already had that set up to make 43.1 degrees, which is 43.08 rounded up. Uh, these two have automatic settings, which you can, it'll raise and, and lower the blade, tilt the blade at the right angle. Uh, the fence position has two positions, high and low, and it changes and adjusts automatically based on the different uh, uh, profiles of the fence. Up here is the stock width and uh, th right now this is set on 15, 19 millimeters and I need to change that to uh, this was 14 millimeters because that parameter comes into play for the length compensation on the compound miter. If you're not doing a compound miter, hey it really doesn't care. Uh, this has a uh, uh, a quick change where if you want to go, you know, I normally use metric, but if you want to use inches, just press the button and it converts it for you. And this button here, it goes back and, and returns to the last setting, uh, which you can, if I did that, it'll pop up the previous setting, which I don't want to do, so I'm going to go back to where I was. The next point is, is the length compensation screen for miters. I'm going to click on this icon. It gives me two choices. The one on the le icon on the left is for the material or your workpiece forward of the fence. The one on the back or on one on the right is the one I use, which is the material on the back side of the fence. So I always use that. It's just a preference for me. So this was my last time I did a compensation setting and um, I need to change that because my fence position right now this is this is to the to the long point as opposed to the short point or this was the wild end. So right now I need to change that. I need to change this setting to fourteen point five one. And, and if I did 14.51, I'll just show you what it, is, what it does here. If I enter that, again, my, my fence is for the long point against here, which, which is for the wild end cut, which, what, which is the one I just did. In order to change that, I need to go back to the opposite setting, which is 14.51, and change the sign here. And that's consistent with the sign on the digital indicator, minus 14.51 degrees. And now I'll set the uh, workpiece up here. The setting I want long point to long point is 500 millimeters. 
I think my knuckle hit the uh, return. So now I'll set the 500 millimeters. My blade angle is there for information. This also has a width of stock, so if you're shooting for a particular dimension on the short point, which I, I don't think I ever really do that because that, that doesn't account for the fact that the other opposite side is, is, is different, but if you subtracted those two parameters, you could, you could adjust for that. But this screen tells me I need to set my stop setting at 502.8 millimeters in order to get a 500 millimeter length point to point piece. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the stock at 508 or stop at 508 point, what did I say, 508.2, oh, 502.8. Well, I've set my stop to 502.8, my fence angle Miter fence angle is minus 14.51 degrees, and now I'm ready to make the cut. Now be gentle, I mean particularly with this soft pine. I'll put the point here against the stop, and then to maintain accurate, maximum accuracy, I'm going to clamp this piece down. So I am right at 500 millimeters or half a meter. Okay, so this is how the overall miter looks. Not very doing very good at holding this together. But I got a real real nice fit up. Thank you for watching. That's how I do compound miters, miters on the, on the sliding table saw. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them and uh, I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.